guys, it's power. Uh, yeah, I have black socks on. Um, this is a, a, a vlog. Um, I don't know what number it is. I lose track. And you'll see my background is a tad different because I do want to show you guys what's going on back here. <coughs> but this is vlog. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit under the weather. This uh. Yeah, this vlog, um, I wanted to do a little bit of updates. Um, well, one Toy Fair is two days away. Today's the ninth. Toy Fair is, uh, well, actually, it's uh, technically three days away, but I am attending the Hasbro uh, private showroom. So I get to check out all the cool new stuff they have, uh, see what kind of plans they have. And remember, if you want to know stuff quickly, uh, it's at Rocket Punch Army. So I'll be tweeting my own stuff uh, along with, uh, you know, uh, Josh from Collection DX. So we'll both be tweeting away. <coughs> um, I didn't really get a lot of responses for people wanting to ask Josh anything. I guess really you can ask on Collection uh, DX, but uh, it was kind of more like if you wanted to know anything about him personally, you know, I would see if it was cool with him to answer a couple questions. But whatever. Another thing. Uh, this uh, giveaway is not going that great. Um, apparently, you guys are not dying to have uh, reverb and crank start, even though they're absolutely free just for making a post. Um, yeah, so apparently, not too popular this giveaway. So, uh, the whole thing was if 20 people sign up, I'll give them away because these did cost me money. I don't care what they cost now in the stores, if they're two for a dollar, I don't give a crap. I paid like eight bucks for these or ten bucks when they came out, so, you know, whatever. They, I spent some money on them. And if you guys aren't into this, uh, you know, the whole thing with the giveaway was just to see if people are really going to uh, bother. Um, so let me know what you guys think, because there's a lot of you that posted and didn't enter. Uh, just posting isn't necessarily going to get you, um, <coughs> excuse me, into the contest. It's posting, saying you want to be in the contest. So, um, the, your best bet is to visit that uh, giveaway vlog and post there. Uh, you can post in any other uh, vlog of mine, uh, as long as I'm really talking about the giveaway, because I check those to see if you're entering. But your best bet is to go to that vlog and you know post there. But you know I'll try and keep up to date with all the posts. But if you don't post in that one, I can't guarantee I'll see it and um, you know get you in on the giveaway. But remember, this is what I'm giving away. The first person I pick in the giveaway gets to choose one of these two, and then I'm going to choose another person to get the other one. Uh, I was going to do the whole Human Alliance uh, figure. Uh, this is what I was going to give away. This isn't. Um, I didn't show you guys this last time because this is actually from one of my friends in Colombia. Uh, was a Human Alliance uh, Sideswipe, uh, which is a Kmart exclusive. I wasn't able to find any more, but this is actually pretty cool. Um, it's got Sideswipe here with some uh, pretty cool graphics. He's done in gray, and it's got this little, you know, uh, <coughs> what do you call it? Snowmobiles and, and a little uh, Sergeant Chaos figure. And they both turn into robots and blah blah. Anyway. Uh, that's not what I'm giving away unless I find one at the last minute but uh let me know if it's surprises that just aren't cool because I can understand not everybody's gonna want movie figures I'll try and do something new uh, I'll check to see how many subscribers I have if um, I did hit the 200 mark which is why I was giving these away I want to try for 300 to give away something a little cooler um, like I said, I wanted to test this. This is just testing waters to see if it's worth investing in giveaways. Um, if I see that <coughs> it's worth investing in it, you'll see cooler stuff come up. Nothing in the $100 range or anything like that, but um, I do have a cool idea for number 300. If you guys have ideas of what I can give away that's easily available in the store where I don't have to pay eBay prices, let me know what you think is cool. I was thinking of the, the NECA Robocop which I did a review on, I think that figure is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, remember, giveaway free. Uh, what else was I going to touch on? Um, I did see 
two cats outside having sex, which is really weird. Uh, you know, I hear them having sex <coughs> once in a while. What this has to do with robots is absolutely nothing. But what's funny is I, I pulled up and there was like one cat on top of the, um, the other cat, the female cat. And, you know, the first thing I thought of was when I would pull around that they would stop and run away freaking out. The male did not. The male stayed on top, even though the female was just like, just trying to get away. The, the male was just like, I'm going to keep going. I don't give a crap if there's a human coming in a big car. So I pull up a little more. They kind of back away. He kind of pulls her with him. And I start rubbing the car and honking. All he does is pull the other one away. I finally got out of the car and try to scare the crap out of them. The poor female cat tries to run away as the, the other cat's like biting on her neck and like this fold of skin came out. She's like just trying to run away screeching and the, the guy cat is just looking at me like let me do my thing. You know? And I'm thinking like that's pretty much how real humans are. Like picture you're all into you know um, you know if you're underage you shouldn't even be watching this video. I'm going to put a disclaimer. You shouldn't be knowing about this stuff. But basically <coughs> It's pretty much how humans are. Like, picture you're at a party, you know, you're getting it on with a girl, and some some dude walks in, you know, and sees you guys. Most guys are just gonna try and keep doing their thing while the girl's like, "Oh my god, oh my shirt," you know. So I thought that was pretty funny. Has nothing to do with robots, but this is a vlog. I can talk whatever, about whatever I want. Yeah. So I was talking about Toy Fair before. Got my nice little cool business cards going on here. With uh, it's got the die tarn. I don't know if you could see that die tarn. Um, yeah, so these I, I just give out, and hopefully someone writes back and says, "Hey, I want some, I want to send you some free cool stuff." Um, oh, see, I was gonna let me put these figures. I, I'm talking with them like I need this to talk. Um, uh, not necessarily <coughs> on my uh, video channel, but a lot of times I'm collection DX people wonder what my setup is for pictures. Um, I don't have any photography uh, classes in my past or anything like that. It's just more of uh, really if you're passionate enough to do something and it's really been with a lot of stuff in my life like my band, the racing, if you're really passionate you can get somewhere with that stuff. Um, I'm not a professional photographer or anything but some people do dig the pictures I take for Collection X and they're wondering if I have like crazy lights or crazy equipment this is my camera. Uh, my old camera that I used in a lot of the earlier, I would say, any time more or anything longer than a year ago, uh, was done with a little Sony camera, which I don't think I have here. Um, <coughs> and the pictures came out great. It's all about just like, uh, I don't want people peeking in my window here. Um, it's all about experimenting with lighting seeing what works, what doesn't. Um, I've had the best um, luck with pictures by just completely avoiding flash. Anytime you put flash in the camera you get a bright object, dark background, which is normally good, but there's so much contrast difference that uh, you know it, it doesn't work out all the time. So let me just show you what I got here. So. I haven't done all my reviews here, but it's almost always the same setup. This is a new thing. I don't know if you guys noticed. I am using a cloth, which cost me about, uh, I think it was $5.44 at Walmart for a yard. Just got one of those. It's just big enough for this little uh, computer desk thingy here. And, you know, I have it taped up there. Nothing fancy. It's just taped to the wall. Uh, I have this IKEA light up here, which I rarely use because sometimes I like the, the background to be uh, black. So uh, this is very rarely used, it just really depends on what I'm um, trying to do with it. And I have these lights off to the side. Uh, these don't really point directly at what I'm taking a picture of. And again, that all depends because anytime I do a review, I just uh, I keep trying different things. Sometimes they're pointing at the object, sometimes they're not. And the trick to getting like a black background is really to try and get the lamp to only shine in this area even though um, 
it may shine on the back. The camera will try and, uh, you know, take the picture of what's here and pretty much ignore the background, making it look black. And it's really, you know, hard to explain. I'm just telling you guys what I do. And um, there's tissue paper. This No, this is not, this is toilet paper, okay? I'm not even cool enough to use real tissue to diffuse the light. I'm using actual toilet paper that anyone can wipe their butt with. And this one hasn't been used, luckily. So, um, so yeah, I, I have in, all this you can get at IKEA. I got this at IKEA. Oh, actually, these I think I got Kmart. I got this drop light, which is uh, not the best lighting for me right now for this video, which is just really shining on my head, just making me look more bald than the normal. Um, yeah. So this big drop light was a, one of the coolest additions. Uh, these smaller ones, eh, you know, I'm thinking of getting more of the, the top ones up here. This I can't really see it, but it's got a long arm. Uh, I forgot what it's called, some type of work light, but <coughs> yeah. And then basically, I put the figure here, um, and I put this camera in a tripod. I like to do the two second delay, and you want that two second delay so you can hit the, the shutter button and leave the camera alone, don't touch it, because if that shutter stays open and you touch anything, your pictures come out blurry. So it's not really an easy thing. Uh, if you guys are wondering exactly how I do my stuff for a collection DX at the moment. But like I said, more than a year ago I was using a regular point and shoot camera and the same applies. Just go into the settings, uh, mess around with the exposures and whatnot, and you know, see what works. It's not just about taking a picture and be like, oh, this sucks, I can never take pictures because you know, it's just all about going in there, changing things, taking pictures. It might take you 20 pictures to find the setting that works for you and your environment. So I found out what works for me. I'm sure if you guys try and uh, duplicate this setup, it might not even come, it might even come out better than mine. Who knows? It might come out worse. It's always different. So that's really my answer to how I do stuff. The same thing with the video. I, uh, I have the same setup for video. So what you see in the video is the same way I take my pictures. So like I said, that's it. Uh, don't want to go on further with that too much. If you guys have any more questions, you can let me know. <coughs> and speaking of uh, reviews and stuff, uh, I've been doing a lot of, uh, what's it called? Those, um, what are those videos called? It came from the vault videos. I've been doing a lot of that uh, because I've been going uh, through my stuff a lot and realizing how much stuff I have that I have not had the pleasure of messing with <coughs> or making videos or reviews for. So there's a bunch of those coming. I think I, I threw up like four in a row already. Um, and I'd like to give you a sneak peek if you've stuck around this long for the video uh, of ones I'm working on. I'm working on this. Uh, this is the Scope Dog. This is a 124 scale plastic model. Now, um, it actually is, excuse me, plastic and die cast. And it's, uh, it's called a, a dual model. Uh, you might recognize the dual models, uh, the uh, Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. This is the way they used to do them before. Um, you don't really have to attach many things. Some stuff, if you look back here, comes in little sprue that you you know you take off the little panels and stick them on this one has already been uh, you know put together by someone in Japan the person I bought it off of so you might want to check that out because scope dogs if you guys are not into scope dogs or have not messed around with scope dogs they look weird I have to admit I've known that these things exist for a long time and I was just never really into the way they look I, you know because it's got a big dome head and it just is weird but you get one and then you gotta buy another, and another, and another. And you gotta collect every version. Uh, they got ones with red shoulders, they got different colors, like this. Same exact freaking thing, just in a pink plastic. So then you gotta own this one, of course. You got this one, you gotta have this one. It's a like a big, ridiculous, like crack infested fury of nonsense. Um, so this is number two, we'll be doing a review on that. Uh, the other one's missing in the box because it's actually my display case. I, I do like it enough to display it. Whoever owned this was perturbed enough with the uh, scrapings 
of the edge of the box on here that they're like I'm just gonna paint it and cover those scratches so apparently they poured the paint on they didn't bother to use a brush because you see the paint just drip in here like really like this edge this white edge like worn out uh, looks worse than slapping on a coat of paint on the edge and just ruining everything and not telling me about it when I bid on it but yeah and there's a price tag up here which is 3,500 yen uh, in today's US currency that's about um, let's see uh, it's, uh, it, this is about 42 million dollars really um, but no seriously 3,500 that would have been maybe when this came out 20 bucks I don't know but you gotta think this is the 80 so 20 bucks let's just say make it 100 yen to a dollar even if you paid 35 dollars in the 80s or less it was still a lot of freaking money for a little toy so you know just to make a comparison uh, G1 figures if I remember correctly the first Transformer G1 that I bought or that my mother bought for me was a hound which cost eight dollars so bottom line my point is uh, Japanese toys are expensive Moving right along, I did get a nice little package today. You see, it says SAL. I sent it slow, so that's why I'm one of the last people to review this. But we'll take a look at what it is. I'm going to pretend I did not open this already. <coughs> this comes from amiami.com. Check it out guys, it's the SH Monster Arts Mecha Godzilla. Now, uh, depending on which movies, uh, sorry the lighting's bad, depending on which movies you've seen, this may not look like the Mecha Godzilla that you're familiar with. You're probably more familiar with the Kiryu version or the very old one. But uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be cool. Um, I've already seen a review on Collection DX. If you haven't, make sure you check that out. Uh, Josh does a uh, a, <coughs> a review on this and points out all the diecast. Yes, diecast, and uh, takes some pretty neat pictures. Um, and then after that, make sure you stay tuned for my review, which uh, you know it's late. Like I said, I'm one of the last few to re to uh, do it. But if you want to check it out, it'll be up soon. And I think that's uh, pretty much going to wrap it up for now, guys. Uh, again, um, if you want real-time updates uh, from the Toy Fair, and that's if uh, we have um, wireless uh, connection, because uh, last year was pretty horrible. You had to kind of go outside to tweet anything or um, re send and receive emails. So we'll see how that works out. But um, it's at Rocket Punch Army.